we now have actually two guest presenters from the Karen Mursal Provincial Directorate of National Education, Murat Çakır and Deniz Çiçek. But I guess one of our presenters uh, will not be able to hear uh, due to a last minute meeting, another meeting. So now I would like to give the floor to them, I mean to Deniz Çiçek. She's here to make the presentation titled Empowering Teachers with Strategies of Digital Era. So welcome again. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Susan Hanım. Uh, first of all, I want to thank to all uh, Boğaziçi team <laughs> for all this organization, the international conference. And also I'd like to thank to all the participants uh, since the beginning of the project. And also the audiences, thank you for spending your time with us, being with us, uh, to the plenary speakers uh, for the really precious information and now that they shared with us. And um, Mr. Chakir, uh, the director, is uh, unfortunately not here with us. Uh, we are sorry for this, you know, these directorate works. He has to be in another project, which was not planned. And uh, he has to go there and he sent his uh, thanks, greetings to you. Uh, though he wanted to make a short uh, welcome speech and share his ideas with us, it's not possible for now. Uh, I don't know, perhaps if tomorrow we can uh, find a suitable time, I don't know for this, uh, perhaps, yes, okay, I see you, uh, uh, If it's possible, I don't know, of course Maybe I can. We would like, to, we would like to see him as well, okay? <laughs> yes, and I will start uh, to share my screen now. Okay, so strategies for teaching in a digital era project. So, uh, well, now I'm going to uh, introduce you the place I am talking at first and my directorate in general, and then uh, talk about some project works we do here in Karamursal. And then finally, I will focus on the uh, strategies for teaching in a uh, digital era project. I know we have some foreign visitors here among the audiences. I'm here in Karam uh, Kojeli, it's very close to Istanbul, the neighboring city. And you see it, I'm on the coast of uh, the Izmit Bay, a very small seaside town like this. You see in the picture, uh, Karam Rusal is famous for its handmade straw baskets and oil wrestling and some historical monuments. It was uh, the... It was the Ottoman Navy uh, in the past during the Ottoman Empire. And um, well, it's, it was very short, <laughs> a little bit cultural tour, culture tour with me. So uh, Karamürsel District Directorate of National Education is the local authority here in Karamürsel. Uh, KDNA is the governmental organization in charge of um, planning and coordination of all kinds of educational and training activities here in all levels of education. Uh, in Karamürsel, in our directorate, uh, we have three assistant directors, 29 personnel, and we have the director. Uh, Karamürsel is uh, a small seaside town with a population uh, around 50,000. So we have five uh, nursery schools, 11 primary schools, 10 secondary schools, 10 high schools, and a lifelong center. So you see the number of the teachers there. And Mr. Murat Çakır is the director. Uh, he wanted me to say his excuses for not being here, for not participating in again. And he sent his greetings and welcome to you again. Um, here in the directorate, uh, it is responsible for taking all the required actions in the field of education and supports school principals, teachers and other staff with variety of in-service training courses. And besides, it collaborates and cooperates with the other directorates and institutions in Karamursa, the governmental bodies, municipality, etc., in order to, to develop the education. Uh, in the directorate, we have an RD and project coordination unit. Uh, it was founded in 2010. And since then, uh, we're working to research and develop projects for, uh, for the better future of young people and the society here in Karamursan. 
uh, we have different scale of projects here, school scale of projects, district directorate scale of projects. Uh, we have province directorate scale of projects from Kojeli. And of course, Ministry of Education scale of projects. We, we sometimes work on projects from the Minister of Education. Also, we have funded projects. Uh, the funded projects, uh, of course, very important to affiliate uh, funds for education. We have TÜBİTAK programs, regional development agency funds and EU funds also, and uh, funds and programs from ministries. First, um, uh, I would like to focus on, emphasize on the teacher development projects and the effects and the results of these projects in general at the beginning of my presentation. For example, TÜBİTAK is the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. And uh, TÜBİTAK 4006 Science Fair program uh, is under a protocol between the TÜBİTAK and Minister of Education. And the overall objective is the fund, the program is to develop a science culture in secondary schools and high schools. So you see the number of schools who participated in these projects since 1914. And here you see the general, uh, at the end of the year, uh, when all those schools finalize their fairs, uh, we organize a bigger one with the participation of the best practices uh, from the schools. And it's a kind of uh, fair again among Karamusal and the directorate coordinates all these uh, festival or the fair every year. Uh, East Marmara Development Agency is the marca, the regional uh, development agency. We also work with this agency and we get funds for the uh, development projects for education. Since 2010, the date when Marka was founded, uh, the directorate applied for uh, lots of projects and all these projects are technical support to develop the education. Uh, you see the names of the projects and they are the topics. So the content of the education is uh, for the teachers, depending on the, of course, target group, the number of the target group. Well, here you see some of them, uh, the teachers' participation to the courses. And in this photo, uh, you see the Technofest. It was last year, as far as I remember, 2021 tech, one Technofest. So one of the teacher training programs uh, funded by Marka was about STEM education. Uh, in the photo on the right uh, hand side, bottom and left hand side, top, you see the uh, teachers from STEM uh, education and the uh, project was in 2018, as far as I remember. Near two or three years later, the teachers from that course uh, worked with their students, worked on coding, uh, STEM, and last year they applied with a project and they were accepted and they, uh, you see in the photo, they had a stall and they presented the project in Technofest. So this means when you invest in invest in education when you work with the teachers of course you see the results with the students a few years later and we are lucky in Karamursan that we we could see this another effect of the uh, project is here you see uh, you will see the red one in in 2000 not 1000 in 2016 we had this project not in 18 the door to the future in education stem it, the target group was the maths and science teachers in karamursa and you see here the number of uh, schools who participated in in 2021 uh, sorry in 2018 
In 2016, the number of schools increased suddenly. In the past, there used to be just one or two or three schools working on Tivitak fairs, uh, 4,006 fairs programs. But now, after the uh, STEM education with the teachers, the number increased. Of course, in 2019, we had problems with COVID. The number was limited again. So uh, you can see the results of the projects. Uh, of course, not only the local funds, we also have EU funds in Karamursel. During lifelong learning program, we have totally 17 projects with our schools and directorates support them with the experience and knowledge. During Erasmus Plus program, we had eight projects and they completed, uh, the schools completed the projects successfully, you see them. And uh, the total number of mobilities under the EU funds in Karamursel, you see, uh, with the students, teachers, assistant participants, is totally 548. And now you know the new Erasmus program has started last year and it will be till 2027. Kojeli Provincial Directorate of National Education has a Erasmus accreditation. So uh, our schools applied for the mobilities to exchange experience. Uh, to develop their personal skills, professional skills. So uh, the projects are going on. Uh, this is an, this is a, a KA2 strategic partnership by the directorate. Vocational schools learn R&D and innovation via virtual reality project. You know, innovation and uh, research development is very uh, trendy, necessary on the economical aspect. Occasional schools give very importance to them. So we also work on this topic and we have a partnership project. Uh, Dudley College of Technology and Matthew, who is the coordinator of this project, is also a partner of the other project. So we work together. And uh, we have two intellectual output with that project. You know, strategic partnership projects should have intellectual outputs. And um, the first one is an e-book, internet-based R&D and innovation handbook in vocational education. And the other one's a virtual reality application. So we have finished the first one at the moment and we're going to work on the second one. We'll have one multiplier events in Turkey, Greece, Lithuania, and uh, the UK. So due to Corona, uh, we had to do most of the activities online. You see, of course, it's not as, as efficient as the face-to-face -face activities, but at least we, we can do something. And uh, vocational uh, teachers and trainers are so excited and they are so happy to be with us because, um, you know, uh, vocational education is very different from the other uh, types of school subjects. So um, they were very happy. They said this was the first time they were with us, with the directorate and the local corporations. And the next uh, step is STDE. Now I'm going to tell you about STD, but a little bit commercial break at first. Uh, I haven't told anything about you. You must be thinking about me and who am I? So I'm the I'm, I'm mother of two daughters. One of them is Manuhor and one of them is 17 years old. And I'm an English teacher. Uh, I graduated from Uda University and I've been teaching uh, since, uh, to, since 1997. Um, all my uh, experience in state schools, uh, we were talking about private schools, you know, Gizem was mentioned about them. We have discussions about different types of schools. Uh, so I know the uh, experiences, experiences, problems, etc., in state schools. And since 2010, I worked as the project coordinator for the district of direction, uh, direction the directorate of Karamursa. And I try to work to develop education and RD projects. And at the moment, I'm an MA student again <laughs> at Kojel University. Uh, I'm studying on lifelong learning and adult education, which is the main point of uh, projects. And also, 
important part of teacher training. I'm an ex volleyball player, and now I work voluntary, voluntarily for a sailing club and the more board member of Turkish Sailing Federation. Well, specifically, uh, if you talk about the uh, STDE project, it is under cooperation for innovation and the exchange of good practices time. It's a strategic partnership for school education. Uh, it was applied for 24 months, but due to COVID pandemic, we had an extension and the duration is 30 months now, and you see the budget. Well, first I will uh, introduce you the uh, project activities according to the uh, application form. We had transnational project meetings at first, though, uh, we couldn't do them all uh, due to Corona again. This was the first kickoff meeting in Karamursal and we, we uh, held it in 2019 in Karamursal. Uh, the second one was in last uh, November in the United States. The coordinator, Matthew, the Dudley College hosted us. Uh, it was both an LTT activity and the project meeting. Thank you, thanks to Matthew and the Dudley team, it was a great experience for us because it was a uh, hybrid activity. Uh, as you see in the photo, the Turkish team was there face to face and the other partners was online. So uh, though some, some technical uh, barriers, it was a very uh, efficient, project meeting and also, oh, sorry, the same things. Uh, it was a very efficient meeting and LTT. So uh, we had the culture tour during the meeting. And uh, when we couldn't uh, perform the face-to-face -face meeting, online meetings and the Zoom meetings and some other uh, applications were the uh, compulsory way for us. We did lots of online meetings during the project to coordinate the works and uh, overcome the problems. Uh, we had five online management meetings with, uh, with the partners. Well, here you see some sub meetings. Uh, some of them were some of them were between two co institutions or three institutions. And during these two years, we had twenty seven sub meetings. Uh, so. Of course, virtual meetings, a solution, yes, solution. Virtual meetings are solution, yes. But uh, when we were face-to-face, -face, we said um, human being is social. So being together, seeing each other, looking face-to-face, -face, being eyes to eyes, having eye contact when you talk to someone is, of course, very important. Now, uh, these are the local activities we we held in Karamursa. In February 2020, uh, sorry, 920, we did the first kickoff meeting. And suddenly, after a very uh, short after the meeting, we had the corona case. Uh, being directly interested in distant learning, we suddenly organized. And we prepared a webinar for the teachers in Karamursa. It was on the 30th of March, just a very short time after the first lockdown in Karamursa. All the teachers were very surprised. All the students were very surprised. We, we didn't know, not only in Karamursa, of course, but also in other parts of the world. All the teachers uh, were surprised what, what, about what to do, how to go on the education. But we are so lucky because we were in this project. And with the experience, Bozici team, Atempo, and also Dudley uh, directed our teachers. They helped us. They shared their information and experience with us. So uh, it was very important for us because uh, all the teachers, because uh, being in Karamursa, a small town, I I'm in good connection with the teachers. I know them all. Uh, we had um, feedback from the teachers and they said, yes, all the activities were great. We didn't know what to do. And we know at least at least a short, uh, short presentation. 
we know what can we do now. Uh, and just 10 days later, we had another webinar, and this was coordinated by Ting. Ting is also another uh, experienced partner on uh, distant learning, not distant learning, digital learning. So we, we organized a very big event, and you see the number of the participants. This was the second one. Some people, uh, to be honest, some of the teachers were, um, uh, were excited about being in front of the screen, listening to the people or opening uh, their screen. They thought, because this was very first activity, first experience for them. But later on, they get accustomed to being with the students in front of the camera. Um, so this is another effect of the project life among the students and teachers. You should know about e-tuning projects. Uh, they are mostly focused on Web02 tools and develop both teachers and students' digital skills on teaching and training activities. Uh, if you look at the number of the projects which have quality label, uh, before 2020, they were very limited. Four schools teachers or six, six one teacher or schools had the quality label. So let me explain you what the quality label, a, a quality label or school label shows that uh, the e-tuning project is, has been implemented into, integrated into the school curriculum successfully and the Web02 tools were used successfully between uh, the teachers of the different schools or the uh, or among the students of the project partners. So you see that in 2021, which is the next year of the two webinars we organized through uh, STD project, the number of the teachers who had quality label, again, I'll say uh, the projects uh, that integrated the project activities into curriculum, into daily lessons, and the Web02 increased, and uh, we see the results of the um, local webinars very short, just one year later. Uh, during the project activities, uh, while the project activities were going on, we had some uh, other local activities. Uh, this is a questionnaire for teachers. It's uh, nearly four or five months later the lockdown, the last year, after the summer holiday, the students and teachers were at home again and the schools started. Then uh, we worked with Senem Hanum for, from Boazici and we prepared a questionnaire. 186 teachers from the primary, secondary and high schools and 56 wet school teachers uh, participated in. And these are some of the questions that I think I would like to share with you. I, uh, they wrote about the most important problems and the online courses they experienced during the COVID period. And then you see the questions again. We, we wanted to understand the uh, source of the problem. Are they technical equipment the teachers use? Are they the technical equipment used by the students? Are they the teacher's level of use of information technology or the student's level of information technology use? The methodological approach used by teachers. So uh, we try to understand the reason. Another one was um, work or activities the teachers have done to solve the problems. Yes, they experienced the problems, but what did they do? How could they solve the problems? Another question was methodological, methodological approaches. Uh, are there enough methodological approaches for digital teaching or for uh, distance teaching? Or whether the teachers can use them or having connection with them or can follow them or not? And another question was, do you use different teaching strategies while using Web02 tools in online course designs? 
Uh, some of the other important questions are like this. What are your students' expectations from remote live classes this year? It's important, the students' expectation. What are the new demands of a knowledge-based society from people? It is also important because uh, we have seen, we saw that Corona is going on. Um, we, people will be at home, the distance learning will go on. The teachers should do something, but sometimes uh, they, they are unlucky due to some uh, technical problems, financial problems. What is the demand of the society at this point? And the last question was, what do you think the new expectation in terms of educational methods? So uh, this show, shows us that we need new educational methods for uh, digital teaching. Another, another um, local activities we uh, conducted during the project was Think Tank and the study group. Uh, we wanted, we asked for volunteer teachers among Karamursa, among the teachers in Karamursa, and we, we had planet, planet studies. Uh, we wanted to show them national and international opportunities to develop themselves. And we talked about digital applications, innovative teaching methods with them. We did this to use distance education methods, digital and mobile devices and applications more effectively and strategically. Uh, this was a kind of infrastructure for us to choose and to choose our LTT teachers who are the uh, digital coach now. Um, we went on some meetings. Here you see them. Tomorrow you are going to have a session with them, uh, with Senem on them, if I'm not wrong. And they will show you their experiences to you. Uh, we had two LTTs up to now. The first one was online with Atempo. And the second line was hybrid with Dudley College of Technology in, in Dudley. Uh, and the dissemination activities, if I come to dissemination activities, we participated in an, in an international conference. Uh, thank to, thanks to Shivnam on one suspect. He uh, helped me to work with this. And um, training educators for digital era, insight from an ongoing Erasmus project. So we, we presented our project in an international conference with, uh, with my partner. And here are the certificates you see. This is another dissemination activity we did last week. Uh, the target group was schoolmasters in Karamursa, and we introduced them, the STD projects activities like this again. So you see them, uh, the website of Karamursa and uh, Facebook and the project website. Well, now some fact files on STDE. Uh, I can't see the chat box. Susan, can you help us? I'd like to ask the participants about these numbers. You see 2015 and 2021. Uh, from 1.49 billion to 2.89 billion. This is a number of something that it increased. What can it be? Can you guess? Something was 1.49 billion and it reached 2.89 billion. I don't know, can anybody write? There's one in chat. I'm just checking in the chat so far uh -huh. now, but we are waiting for your guesses, dear participants. Yes, can you guess what, what was 1.49 billion and it reached 2.89 million, billion, sorry. Can you make a guess? We got one guess, let me read it. People paying for online, offline video games. Video games, up, no. Uh, this is the number of Facebook users. Zoom users, uh, Tamari. <laughs> Zoom users, <laughs> yes, this is, yes, it is so close. This is the number of Facebook users. Uh, what about the next one? $313.92. 42,000, uh, it's mistake, it's my mistake, 42,737,064 US dollars. What is this? Can you guess? Uh, 
Okay, this is Bitcoin price. In 2015, Bitcoin was 313 US dollars, but now it is 42,738. At and time we have billionaires, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, that's right. So the last number is a sad one from zero to uh, 320 million. And this, and this is the, I will say it, this is the number of corona cases. Um, you see the gamers, you see the games. I don't know if, if the audiences are interested in game, gaming. But, uh, you know, they have changed, but Call of Duty is top one again. For example, Minecraft, there used to be Minecraft, but it's not anymore. There was not Mario Party Superstars, but it is now. So what? Uh, why I am writing these numbers and showing this? 2015 is important but because, as Yasem was mentioned, it was the first year we applied for this project. We, we uh, in Kadem Rusal, we said, in order to teach digital in the classroom without distant learning, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, and uh, embedded with digital tools, we applied in 2015. This shows us that digital world, digital technology has developed so fast. And can you imagine what's going to happen in 2028? or 2033, what will happen to, how many people will use Facebook? Or uh, what about the Bitcoin price or the games? So it will never stop, it will go on. Um, in my next uh, photo, you'll see some of the apps. This is from 2015 again. Uh, that year, we had a project, KA1 project with Karamusha uh, Antolin High School, and we were in Graz with Atempo. It was the project I met with Atempo and Karl. Uh, we, we, we remember him, we thanks to, we thank to him, sadly. Uh, so uh, rest in peace, let's uh, remember Karl here. And these were the, you see, apps, Famous, they introduced us. Pages, show by, PDF Reader Pro, Sketch, uh, Socrative, Keynote, Mindomo, Kahoot. Some of them are still here with us, Kahoot, but some are forgotten. So since 2015, a lot of things has changed, but digital technology has been growing up. So why a strategy? So strategy, uh, is the futuristic plan you use when there is an unknown situation. So the first reason, using digital tools traditionally. This is a dilemma, but I did this myself after getting back from the uh, course, iPad and tablet course in Graz. I prepared a Kahoot and I used it in the classrooms. All the students loved it so much. They say, yes, Mrs. Chick, it is great. Let's do it again, let's do it again. I used the same questions in different uh, classrooms in different level of English. But, and I thought, oh, I'm doing something very good. But no, there was no methodology. There was no strategy because I was using it in traditional way. And this was the dilemma. Another reason is risk. Uh, Gizem Hanım said that in some of uh, private schools, uh, the number of tools the teachers use is limited. Why? Perhaps they think it is risky because in the classroom, the students know everything. The teacher uh, should control. Uh, there should be a good classroom management. There should be a digital classroom management. So the teacher should control all the digital tools. And if you use more than one digital tool in the classroom, it can be risky. You can use the control in the classroom. So you need a strategy. Another one is, uh, in addition to the tools, the digital content. As, uh, as the professor has mentioned, uh, Professor Dewey has mentioned about uh, preparing materials, digital materials, uh, thanks to his uh, precious um, speech, preparing the cre creation, uh, preparing material, content creation is a little bit different for us because we don't have 
um, if you don't have pedagogical, digital pedagogical aspect, you have difficulty in uh, preparing the lesson plan or the content, lesson creation is difficult for you. So you need a strategy for this again. And the 21st century skills we know analyzing and problem solving. So when you are using digital uh, tools in the classroom effectively and confidently, you, you need to know, uh, you need to know, as you need to have a strategy, of course, again, Generation gap is another problem. Uh, so the students in the classroom have a lot of experience. Um, they have learning experience with digital tools. They know how to use them. They spend so much time in front of the screens, small screens on uh, their mobiles, but the teachers not. So andropogy is um, for adult teaching. And pedagogy is for te children teacher. So if you think of that, children know a lot about digital tools. They are not children, in fact, they are adults on tools. So when you teach them, behaving them as a ch children with pedagogy can be a problem for us. Perhaps we should use andropogy rather than pedagogy because they are more experienced than us. So this is why we worked on a strategy. And uh, at the moment, I'd like to thank to Mr. Matthew Jedenhide again, who is the coordinator of this project from Dudley College of Technology. Uh, in 2009, after four years of application in 2019, uh, British National Agency funded our project. And uh, this methodology, STD methodology, opened doors to strategic use of participatory approaches and ICT-based methodologies for all of um, uh, well, Erasmus program gives institutions and professionals and students various opportunities to create international outcomes through learning and teaching activities and cooperation. So uh, this project bring positive and long lasting effects on the participating organizations, on the policy systems in which such actions are framed as well as on the organizations on persons directly and indirectly we want to organize activities. Uh, I have a little bit, a few uh, screens more. So uh, of course, KDNA has a lot of uh, gainings through this project. I'm sorry, somebody opened the door. Sorry for the noise if that comes. Uh, KDNA increased capacity, professionalism. Uh, so we have international, pro, uh, international uh, experiences and with partners from other countries, we increase quality in the preparation, implementation, monitoring, and follow-up of international projects here. Uh, STD project partnership has a modern, dynamic, committed, and professional environment body inside. So we create synergy together and um, strategic planning of professional development for the staff in line with individual needs and organization, organizational objective is another important gain of the project. Um, this is the end, yes. Thank you very much for your listening to me. And um, I will stop share. I don't know if it's a good time management. So no, it's, it's, it's, really it's, really good. Good. it's really good. We have started already 10 minutes late. <laughs> so Oops. yeah, that's, that's sorry, fine. Sorry for that, sorry for no, that. It, was quite timely. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation, very informative and very live. So thank you very much, Dean Sanum. So, and I also see the thanks in the chat again for your presentation. If there is any question, we can also uh, discuss it. I mean, we can, but there are thanks are coming. Thanks. You're welcome. So thank you very much. So.